Um, so I'm Tim Rivet. I run Artig, um, and I'm gonna talk today a bit at the start about um, a, a European project that's kicking off that we need to factor into and a bit about the challenges it's hoping to try and solve. And then we will go and get um, interactive um, because uh, need to uh, need to understand what some of the requirements are and things like that that we might have from the UK. So a bit of um, background. Um, so um, for a good many years, um, there's been quite a lot of work um, across the public transport um, sector to try and create standards for planned and live data. Um, there was um, a project now quite a long time ago that some of you were involved in. Um, I think at least two of you, um, European Bus Service of the Future, um, two, um, because one had been even further away, which um, was try getting to the point where you could plug and play things um, much more than you could historically, um, and trying to get to the point where um, particularly authorities like London, where this was trialled, and um, in Spain, which are franchise environments, um, it became not about technology on vehicle, it came all about the data um, and the focus on data. And there was a number of things that, that came out of that work um, that highlighted um, some gaps in the um in the ecosystem for data in public transport um if you've been to any of the sessions that i've done over the last few years on data standards um this diagram uh, is probably going to be familiar um there are a whole load of different points within public transport, the process from you know, planning the network and planning individual services and journeys um, all the way through to uh, uh, managing things live and um, what was the um, on-time performance of, of this service, um, do we need to change the timetable, that sort of thing. Um, so there's a, uh, and at each of those points, there's a load of data that that is created um, and collected, um, or sometimes thrown away because um, uh, there's no way to uh, no way to deal with it. Um, but um, by looking at the 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 different stages of public transport from planning all the way through to, to you know what happened in the past um, we can look at where there are data standards already and identify um, some gaps and things like that um, there is a overall architecture for um, public transport data that's been developed um, in europe um, with a lot of help from the UK um, over the years um, called Transmodel and that tries to um, model at a high level the concepts necessary for, for data um, pretty much across the whole uh, cradle to grave scenario um, for public transport. Um, for planned data there's NetEx um, there's also GTFS in use across much of the rest of the world and quite a lot in the UK and Europe these days. Um, and that's 
uh, you know, that's a subset of the sort of stuff that NetEx supports. NetEx isn't widely used in the UK at the moment, but Mr. Penn um, is trying to uh, sort that out with fares. Um, for live stuff, the, the what's happening here and now, where is the particular journey, is it on time, that sort of thing. There's Siri, which uh, is pretty well understood um, and uh, there's a, quite a lot of implementations and, 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 and use of that. Um, for um, pre-trip planning and live journey planning, there is a relatively recent standard, uh, OJP, um, which um, came out of stuff that we did in the UK with fare exchange and things like that, and things that were going off in um, some of the European countries. Um, the the bit that's missing really um, is the is the the bit on the right the the historical the the after events stuff, um, and um, that's what we're gonna. Uh, focus on today um, because uh, there isn't a standard for that. There isn't a common way of moving historical data around that uh, people understand. Um, just to put a few other bits on in, in UK context to help, um, NAPTAN uh, all about assets. Um, that's really all about the planning side of things. Um, Trans exchange covers um passenger information and network scheduling and and that sort of thing a bit um but um the bit that as i say we're going to talk about is this this right bit the the historical stuff um being um a european um project um it's got an acronym it's got its own logo god knows why but they they like their acronyms and logos um, in European projects. Um, so um, this historical bit is called OPERA, Operating Raw Data and Statistics Exchange. Um, for those of you that have been um, attending PTIC uh, for a number of years, I've talked about this a number of times. Um, it's been a long time in coming, um, but uh, but we're at the point now where um, we can actually start to do some things um, and to talk about requirements and things like that. Um, so um, what is OPERA and what is it all about or what is it planned to be all about, I should say. Um, so within the, the sort of the technology stack, you know, we've looked at you know, the, this, the different stages from a data point of view from a technology um sort of stack you've got people that are creating data um putting it into and supplying it um to operators uh, who use it operationally um that then feeds into things that um a um a public authority or a uh, regulator might be interested in um, managing things on the ground live in a control room, for example, um, to help with uh, with bus priority and things like that. Um, and then um, after the event, um, there's a load of uh, data management that takes place. Um, uh, people do analysis on it both live and historically um, operators authorities uh, are using that to to help plan what's going on and tweak um, services and things like that and so uh, it's within that sort of that reporting sort of bit of the stack that that the opera um, sits um, there with the work that's been done so far um, there's a number of um, actors involved. So um, within um, the, the planning of, of, of standards and 
um, uh, designing architectures and things like that. Um, that there, there are some standardised way of um, uh, representing things. So people that use things and um, create things, they're called actors. So um, the 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 roles involved. So you've got people like public transport operator who you know they provide because this is Europe, a lot of this work's been done in a European context. It is um, it talks quite a lot about contracted services and franchised operations and things like that. Pretty similar to to the way that we operate in the UK or the concepts and the requirements are at least and things like that. So you've got the public transport operator who's, who's providing services either commercially or contracted. Um, they're doing things and you know, they're wanting to run efficient services to reduce costs. Um, you've got public authorities, um, both regulatory ones. So you know, DVSA, um, DFT, local authorities who might be buying contracts, um, uh, regulating what's going on. Uh, they're interested in knowing whether people are providing the services that um, they should be, um, uh, checking uh, on-time performance, for example. Uh, if you've got a supported service, uh, is the vehicle the right sort of vehicle? And increasingly, you know, what's its emissions? Should it be in this area and and, and that sort of thing? Um, you've then got systems integrators, people that are providing the hardware and the software and plugging it all together, um, who uh, are working with all of this data um, and supporting the operators and, and authorities uh, to, to, to get the data that they need. You've got passengers at the other end the, from a historical and statistics type basis are interested in you know, data quality and confidence. You know, how reliable is this service? Is it good enough um, for me to uh, to be able to trust it? Um, for a number of years, it seems to have disappeared from a lot of rail stations. Um, train operators used to have to publish their uh, statistics about um, uh, operations, you know, timeliness, number of um, journeys cancelled and things like that. You know, passengers, that was put there to help provide some trust in in rail services, and uh, that may be why it's disappeared. Um, but then there's, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, sorry. Um, and then um, there are others that, um, people that are involved that have an interest in statistical data and performance data um, that we probably ought to be identifying at this point um, and um, making sure that their requirements are understood. Um, and this is where, um, in a bit, I'm going to ask you to, to get your thinking hats on and things like that. Um, so the sort of things that that opera um, are interested in the sort of data elements to try and uh, you know help you get your head around it. So you know um, it could be um, uh, moving data around about you know the time spent at bus stops, the dwell time, um, uh, the, the the speed between stops. Um, the timeliness, you know, is it is it, you know, a minute early to to five minutes late, that sort of thing. Um, um, so that's the sort of stuff that that in the UK we regularly think about, um, and might use reporting tools for and things like that. Um, and um, once you've identified the 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 people involved you then need to work out what are um people going to use this data for what are the the use cases 
um, for each of the different people. Um, and you know that might be from looking at things live, you know, where are the buses at the moment? Are they on time? Um, oh no, they're not. So maybe we need to tweak the traffic lights. Um, maybe we need to um, put another bus on because they're all full or um, one journey's running so late, it's never going to run on time for the next one. Um, for example, um, then you've got the contractual report inside. Um, you know, are they running the right vehicles that they said they're going to? Are the drivers the right, uh, wearing the right uniform? Have they got the right training? Um, if that's part of the contracts and things like that, and then um the 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 more quality of service sort of stuff uh, what was the timeliness um uh, that sort of thing um so uh, so there's there's a number of groups of use cases um that have been um thought about so far um so um we've talked about um those there's some more detail um so far only 18 have been worked up um and we'll talk about what's been done so far um and there's a couple of um proposals for um how you might move data around um you know, uh, a offline so to speak bulk type document exchange um being European standards, they're all XML based, something I'm very interested in exploring um, with you um, in a in a minute. Um, but, so there's the bulk exchange and then there's the more dynamic um, exchange, which um, could use um, the sort of um, uh, approach that you do for uh, live location data with Siri. Um, where there's a where there's an ongoing communication um, between systems. Um, so um, what's happened so far? Um, a number of years ago, starting in about 2015, 16-ish, um, there was um, coming out of the uh, European Bus um, of the Future program. Um, the identification that actually there was a gap um, because people were wanting to um, share the performance data, the historical data, and they were, you know, bashing heads because um, and there was no common way of of moving data around. Some of you um, will have been involved in replacing real time systems. Uh, and trying to get data out of one real-time system and get it into another one for, for historical analysis and things like that and having to, uh, each time you do it, you, you're having to do it differently because there's no standard. Um, there was a review of existing work that had been done across the different um, countries in Europe and, and around the world um, and um, there is a SEN technical report which was published in 2019. So within the standards context, that's the most simplistic um, document that basically goes, there's a problem. Um, this is the sort of scope of it. This is what you might do about it. Um, and here are some pointers to how you might solve it. So that's been around for four years. Um, the next step after the technical report is you create a TS, a technical specification. Um, so that's the detail. Um, so bits of Siri um, are in that state, you know, quite usable standards. Um, but at the point where they might be changing frequently or you might not be quite sure that um, you've got the scope right and things like that. Um, and the ultimate standard is is an EN, um, so European norm. That's bits of NetX and Syria in that point. So parts one to three um, 
of Siri are European norms. That means that a government can go in a law, um, you will use this standard and people go, fair enough. It's, you know, it's well understood. It's stable. We can uh, you know, expect suppliers to be able to uh, to use it um, and not have too many problems. Um, so um, the work on Opera at the moment is at the technical report stage. Um, after many years of negotiation and toing and froing between the EU and SEN, the European Standards Body, and UITP and, and various other uh, organisations, we got to the point where there is a project which has some uh, funding um to take the technical report um and turn it into a technical specification um so and that's going to be starting um fairly soon in the autumn um we're just waiting for the project team to be uh, approved uh by sen um and then work can start and that's really why um i've got this session um together because um what we need to do um in that project is is validate the previous work um uh, there has been things done elsewhere since in the last four years um so you know there's stuff in in g uh, that sits sort of around gtfs that might help there's been some stuff done in 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 america um separately to that that might be of use um but and this is really the focus of today um is uh, validate the use cases do we actually understand the problems that we're trying to solve how will people meaningfully use uh opera um going forward um because unless we understand the use cases um then we're not going to be actually able to solve people's problems um and there'll be a standard but nobody will use it because it doesn't meet their requirements and so um today um what i want to do is to, is to explore those the use cases and and the actors that might be involved in um using this to to try and get us along the next um and the next stages um of developing the the technical standard um and um there'll be a number of points during that process that um you know i will come back and we'll do you know similar um sessions keep you up to date on what's going on and um you know explore where we need more information in the project to help us move to the next points so i realize that's maybe not the most flowing presentation i've ever done and explanation but has anybody got any questions at this point about where we've got to and, and process and things like that no is anybody there my only question would be timescales tim i guess um obviously this is of interest to to the board's team um you know we're looking at how we're going to warehouse all the data in the future and make it available to third parties and machine learning ai all the buzzwords um so obviously this, this is something we're looking at of, i guess as a way of exposing all of the archive data um so yeah but to sort of time scales realistic um um so realistically given the work that was done on the um current um exploratory document there was some work done on on a what what the the xsd schema might look like to to try and work out where some of the problems um might be um so you know that needs revalidating and trans models moved on quite a lot and things like that but um i think that by this time next year it's reasonable to think that there will be a um 
a technical schema there will be some guidance documentation um available um in a in a draft that's been round you know people a couple of times and and we've ironed out the obvious bugs and things like that um in terms of turning that into um a formal ts that you can go and buy from bsi um that probably will take another 12 months after that just because the process of um agreeing a standard is very laborious um once you've done the the initial work so you know within certainly within 12 months there'll be something that people ought to be able to develop against um and start to to use um and identify you know the real world problems from implementation rather than um you know just looking at it and going oh yeah i can see a problem you know, you, ver version one is rarely long lived um <laughs> as i'm well, sure you all have <laughs> experienced you know that's a more positive story than i expected to hear i, I was expected to hear 2027 or something uh, ridiculous like that um so yeah i guess it gives us something to keep an eye on as we start to think about the warehousing of the data um what it might be useful is if you could share this deck with us afterwards. Um, of course, yeah, yeah. I yeah. think you know, in terms, in terms of the use cases, I'm sure that you know, given all the conversations people on boards are having with all the data consumers and stuff, there may be some use cases that we can drum up um, some suggestions, some ideas. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm I'm going to get interactive in a bit, um, as you might have seen from a um, from the uh, event bright emails you'll have been spammed with um over the last couple of hours reminding you about this um we're gonna bob over to 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 to, to mural in a minute and try and understand what some of those are um from you to, to get you working this lunchtime um well just as well i don't really pay attention to the invites to be honest tim uh, <laughs> so I did not yeah well okay we'll <laughs> we'll deal with that one in a minute has anybody else got any questions and thoughts Thank you for watching this Artig webinar. To find out more about Artig and our work, then please visit our website at rtig.org.uk. Thank you.